So good morning. We're so happy to have everybody with us this morning. And we are so thrilled to have Marissa Fear from Strategies for Children, who is going to share an update on the early childhood agenda. Marissa. Thanks, Amy. And hello, everyone. Good morning on Monday. So I wanted to start with just a couple updates from where we are in the process and just sort of the lay of the land for what we have coming up um, and then dive into an activity for the second half of the 930 call to sort of queue up what we're um, doing on the early childhood agenda meeting tomorrow. So to start, I'm not sure if everyone in the 930 call has seen this yet, but we developed a game board to sort of illustrate the early childhood agenda process to help partners understand where we are and sort of what's what's coming up, what's the sequence and how we will ultimately get to identified tangible solutions that are on this final product in January um, that cut across practice and policy and that have key investments attached and lead advocates. So as you can see, the little red marker here where it says you are here is sort of where we are in the early childhood agenda process right now. So we've had a few meetings and over the last couple of meetings, the primary purpose has really been to identify the problem areas or the challenges that is faced by the early childhood community. And we know that that's been sort of an interesting tension or it's been an interesting way to sort of shift our mindsets because we want to be solutions focused. We want to you know, speak with asset-based language, but um, to quote Kim Lucas from the last meeting, you know, if we don't identify the problems first, then we might miss potential solutions. We might not be able to think about some really creative, really sort of innovative solutions or we might actually be solving the wrong problem with our proposed solutions. So it's important that we sort of start with that stage and then eventually move into solutions, which is what we are doing today. So we're transitioning to the solutions part of the conversation. And uh, that will be sort of the remainder of the early childhood agenda process. You can also see that right before the red marker, there is a facilitation guide. And uh, this is gonna come out today, potentially tomorrow. Um, and what we're really trying to do there is to one, get feedback from the whole early childhood agenda group, every partner that's been involved so far on what those proposed challenges are, um, as well as to sort of activate everyone's individual network. So we know that there is, you know, there are a certain number of people who have been involved in the early childhood agenda so far, but we really want to get feedback from families, um, from members of the early childhood community who may not be actively engaged with us on the 930 call or with the early childhood agenda so that we can get sort of a broader audience um, and really pressure test the challenges that we've identified. So the facilitation guide is really meant to support partners who are holding uh, virtual or in-person meetings over the next couple of weeks so that you can run through sort of build in time into those meetings, run through a series of questions and share what we've come up with so far through the early childhood agenda with that, with that group. And part of that is through a survey. So we've developed a survey that um, will ask partners to either take notes on during the, with the facilitation guide, or you can just share it broadly through email blast. And we've drafted some template language that you can include in the email as well. So that should be coming today or tomorrow. And then uh, upcoming, we also have our next meeting of the early childhood agenda on Tuesday, December 6th from 10 to 11.30. And as I mentioned, that's really going to be about identifying the solutions. So thinking about um, for each of those proposed or each of those identified challenges that we've come up with, what's a solution that we could um, put on the final product? And that's sort of the activity that we're going to do today. Uh, the other element of this that is really important is wanting to make the connection between um, sort of the theory. So like the proposed solutions that we all can think of and what's actually happening right now. So we know that there are a number of organizations, coalitions, campaigns that are happening currently in early childhood. And we want to make those real connections so that we are you know, engaging with the early childhood mental health campaign or the Feed Kids campaign that we heard from Project Bread about on the 930 call a couple weeks ago. So making those real time connections and um, having that strong feedback loop between the early childhood agenda and what's being developed on, on that uh, product as well as, as uh, organizations are actively developing advocacy agendas for the next legislative session. So um, that will be a big component of the early childhood agenda's work over the next couple of weeks to really start by thinking about how do we make the connections between the challenges we've identified and what's really happening right now? And then how do we share the work of the early childhood agenda with those groups or encourage them to be involved? All right, so now I'm gonna pop into this document. 
just want to see if there's any questions in the chat too, Amy. Well, Marissa, I'm getting um, I'm getting some chats and texts about when the recording will be available. So we'll make sure we get this recording up today, tomorrow, before the meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Tomorrow we will end the 9.30 call at 9.45, so we can all prepare to get on the call at 10 a.m. And I've also had some questions about the recording for Dr. Shu. That is on me. I recorded it. I'll make sure we get it up on YouTube today. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> All right, so this is a preview of the facilitation guide, which I'm mostly showing just so we can uh, share the priorities that have been identified thus far. So um, when you go down, the facilitation guide really starts with just sort of an introduction to the early childhood agenda so that we can sort of level set. And for those who have no idea what this is or who haven't been involved to date, they can have a little bit of an introduction there. What we're really encouraging partners to do is to send um, their networks to our website to watch that introductory video that we've previewed on the 930 call a couple times and to read through the content there because that's really the best way to understand what we're trying to do together. Uh, we've also used this elevating protocol, elevating voices protocol a couple of, um, throughout the early childhood agenda process and on the 930 call. And what we're really trying to do there is to uh, sort of self-classify ourselves based on our roles. So number one is either in your role, you interact with children and families every day, or that you are the primary caregiver of a young child. Um, in your role, you interact with children and families occasionally is number two. And in your role, you interact with children and family. You do not interact with children and families, but have a vested interest is number three. Um, and really what we're trying to do here is ensure that when we are having smaller, large group discussions, that we're inviting the number ones to speak first. And then if there's nothing sort of to add there, then moving on to number twos and threes so that we're hearing from those who are sort of closest to the early childhood work programs and services first. We then have a discussion prompt. So this is really mimicking or sort of mirroring a lot of the activities that we've done through the early childhood agenda so far. So starting with just one opportunity before we've shared what we've come up with, uh, just sort of one blank opportunity to hear from everyone's sort of partners and networks on what some of the most sig significant challenges that they face every day are. So wanting to just open that up. And we've left a couple prompting questions there or some things to think about. So we know that the early childhood agenda work is really bucketed into five different areas. So financially secure families is one of them, really thinking about like the economics of uh, family security. Number two is high quality experiences. So we had a couple prompting comments about the types of experiences and interactions that young children have in early childhood and the quality of those experiences. So when we think about the many different settings that children may be in. Uh, we know the workforce is a big part of this and we're defining the workforce as anyone who works with children from birth through age eight. Um, then we know that that covers sort of a variety of sectors including early education and care, but broader than that. Uh, the infrastructure and partnerships that are created by local, state and federal government. So we know that there's sort of a system infrastructure behind all of this and what are the things that we can do to sort of um, support programs and services in delivering higher quality products, as well as to, uh, to support families in navigating those programs and services. And then the importance of health in the early years is the final one. So starting with this discussion prompt during the, during the meeting time and then moving into the feedback. So we will have the survey link right here on the facilitation guide. We'll also be sharing that over email. And this is gonna be the primary um, sort of note taking method for the facilitation guide, as well as just a survey that we're asking folks to complete. So if you are in a group meeting or a group setting, um, what we're going to ask you to do is to conduct the meeting in the preferred language. And then we, um, we do have the survey translated into a number of different languages, but we know that that won't, uh, that won't sort of be, that won't be um, the languages that everyone needs. So if uh, the language or the preferred language of the group is different than one of the ones we've translated into, what we're asking you to do is sort of conduct the meeting in, in the preferred language of the group and then to take notes in English and sort of reach consensus as a group and sort of fill it out together. And now I'm going to scroll down to the priorities. So this is what the early childhood agenda has identified as priority challenges for each of the different working groups. So I'll just read through each of these. And then um, in about four or five minutes, we'll transition into the activity. So for financially secure families, uh, we have four different priority challenges that have been identified so far. So the first is the cost of living is too high for families to meet their children's basic needs with dignity. Second, workplace policies aren't family friendly 
and there is limited access to paid family leave. Number three, financial education and resources that build assets and generational wealth are not easily accessible to families. And then number four, childcare is not affordable. So the one thing I wanted to share from as we're going through these is that the working groups are meant to complement each other. So what we did over the past week or so and at the last meeting was uh, we looked at each of the individual priorities and we tried to combine where we could or we tried to zoom in further where we could. And then we also looked across the different working groups and we tried to see where there was similarities or overlap or uh, working groups had sort of identified similar challenges where we could consolidate that into one of the working groups work moving forward or their focus moving forward. So that's what we did a lot here. And um, really what it's meant to do is just to focus the work, focus the conversation for each of the different working groups so that we're not being duplicative, that we're uh, that the financially secure families group as an example, I know that they came up with a lot of things related to access as well. So we sort of moved that into the system infrastructure group and we left the affordability piece in the financially secure families group. And if there are any um, comments or thoughts on these different priorities as I'm reading through them, please throw them in the, the, into the chat. These are not finalized by any means. We're, uh, we're gonna be sort of slowly transitioning to solutions over the next couple of weeks and incorporating feedback from everyone via the facilitation guide in the survey as well as the 930 call. So please throw just, those into the chat. As a reminder, these were generated from the working group meetings that we had and then the base camp tool where there were many conversations going on. So it was both in person on Zoom meetings and through the kind of the web-based tool online. There was, a there was a question in the chat about including family member caregivers as for the early ed workforce. So that would be something that we would put on, we would include in this agenda for discussion. Yeah, that's a great point, Robin. Um, we've, we've talked a lot about like family friend and neighbor care. And I think especially in this high quality experiences group, that could be a really interesting place to incorporate some recommendations. So yes, I think that's definitely part of this scope. All right, so for high quality experiences, um, the importance of early childhood isn't well understood and the workforce programs and services aren't valued within society. The standard of high quality programming is unclear and programs lack the supports, quality improvement plans and incentives to achieve that standard. Staff and program leaders do not receive the necessary preparation, training, and support to deliver high quality programming. And then policy and practice is not grounded in child development and brain science. So one of the things we noticed about this group was that there's a lot of very high level sort of challenges that are ident identified here, which could be really interesting in terms of the next step in identifying solutions. So it allows us to really think very broad, very holistically about what some of those solutions are. But this is one area where it might be more helpful to sort of zoom in on a couple of challenges uh, that are preventing us from providing high quality experiences for children. All right, and then thriving early childhood workforce. So early childhood professionals do not receive competitive wages and their benefits are a high cost burden. Struggle recruiting and retaining early childhood professionals, including professionals with specialized training. Uh, there is not a competency based and integrated career, career lattice for early childhood professionals to advance or move between fields. The early childhood workplace does not encourage or prioritize staff wellness and higher education is unaffordable or inaccessible to early childhood professionals. And the final two for robust system infrastructure and local partnerships. Uh, we have, there is not a formal infrastructure that coordinates and encourages collaboration across early education and care, public schools, higher education, health, so, so social services, and more at the local level with equitable representation at decision-making tables. The shortcomings of our data infrastructure restrict our ability to match programs and services to need and understand outcomes. Supports are not family-centered, easily accessible on uh, several dimensions, and integrated to support families in navigating their care and needs. So as an example, in terms of accessibility, I know some of the originally identified points were like language access. Um, we talked a lot about transportation. So when you think about just like the, even the application process itself and sort of the paperwork that's involved in uh, qualifying for public services and benefits. Um, there's sort of a variety of things that we can talk about in terms of accessibility in this group. And then finally, funding streams are not coordinated and the early childhood system is underfunded. 
And then finally, in healthy beginnings, we have there is no model of care coordination to help bridge transitions and offer continuity of care over time. There are barriers to accessing timely developmental screenings, assessments, evaluations, and referrals that contribute to delayed services and impact child development. Healthcare providers are not well integrated into early education and care infrastructure. A lack of robust and integrated prenatal, perinatal, and postnatal supports for caregivers. Children's basic needs are not being met. And the relationships between families and practitioners lack cultural sensitivity and trust, which impacts the quality of care families receive and their awareness of resources available to them. So those are the priorities that have been sort of identified to date as challenges with uh, the early childhood system. And I see there's some comments in the chat too. It's me and Titus talking about okay. how much work we're going to have to do and how incredible and rich and how much data and content we have. And we've talked a lot about this in our team about what does this look like? How do we really use this? And, and I think most importantly to hear from folks today and over the next few weeks is, is this reflective, which we think it is, <laughs> of what's happening? And then as we move to solutions, um, what does that look like from uh, everyone's perspectives? Yes. All right, so now what I wanted to do is just give an example of how we're hoping that the activity will go tomorrow and what we'd encourage all of you to do sort of virtually through base camp or if you can attend the meeting tomorrow as well. Um, and again, this process is gonna take the next couple of weeks. So there'll be plenty of time to, uh, to sort of go on to the virtual platform and provide feedback as well. So I'm gonna put a link into the chat um, to a new group map activity. And I know that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of content across many different groups here. So I'm really just gonna zoom in on one of them. We're gonna use financially secure families as an example today and use that um, to gather some initial feedback from the 930 call. So I see we're starting to populate. Um, in the group map. So what we've done here is we have sort of two different uh, rows. The darker green color, I guess it is, um, at the top row has each of the different priorities listed. So we have the four priorities that we just outlined there. Underneath that, we have this lighter green color. Thank you, Amy. We have this lighter green color that talks about lead advocates or state partners. So what we're really trying to do now at this stage is we want to ask you all to think of solutions. So when I say the cost of living is too high for families to meet their children's basic needs with dignity, what are some of the potential solutions that we could propose on the early childhood agenda to solve that problem? Um, to provide feedback, you just click on the plus sign there and then you can type in some words. So I'll write in testing and then you just click enter and it populates. So what I would ask everyone to do on the 930 call is just to go ahead and read through each of these different priorities and start to, there we go, eliminate minimum voting age. So we can go through and start to add in different solutions to each of those four challenges. But then what I'd really encourage everyone to think about also is in your conversations as part of your networks, have you heard of organizations, coalitions, campaigns that are doing work in these areas? So the example I've given is we know that the earned income tax credit is one potential solution that would uh, at least address the cost of living and families just needing more financial resources. We also know that there's a Healthy Families Earned Income Tax Credit Coalition. So we've included that directly below it. So as you're going through, as you're thinking of solutions, please also include the organizations in the bottom, uh, the bottom row so we can get some responses there as well. And if anyone's having a hard time logging into the group map, I can help with some troubleshooting right now as well. I see we're starting to populate. Yeah, so we have prioritized families with young children in any broader economic plans. So examples to combat inflation, to boost economic development, affordable housing, to really prioritize that population. Policies for affordable housing, federal funding to provide monthly stipend to families to cover basic needs. I did see something in base camp the other day about um, lots of the COVID related financial relief that families were receiving and how beneficial that was. All right, so, so let Boston. me just qualify my data comment. I was talking about the qualitative data that we've collected, but Cecile and Renee are talking about, you know, what data we have to show that these we're on the right track. So I think it's a two pronged yeah. question and it's a good thing to be thinking about, about where's the data that can really kind of stand by and support as we get toward the solutions. 
Yes. And I'll also highlight that we have a data team that's going to be focusing specifically on data um, in the early childhood agenda. And one of the next activities of that group is to look at each of these different priorities and to collect what's the data we have related to this, what's the data we need to this, we need related to this, because I think that will help the group um, to really focus in. Like there might be something that's identified on here that once we actually look at the data, it may not be true, it may not be completely accurate. It's something that we have to really incorporate that into the process as well. All right, I'm seeing this continue to populate. So government help in affording quality care, financially supporting early education as a public good. Uh, private employers and federal state government can all provide more generous leave policies. The US fails, falls behind on paid leave. There needs to be policy change. The Business Coalition for Early Education and Care. Thank you, I'm seeing some of these advocates or uh, state partners popping up at the bottom. Um, Another one that I know that uh, we talked about is, so there's a baby bonds task force, I believe is what it's called, through the um, state treasurer's office and the office of economic empowerment. So that would be one example where it's really sort of a state infrastructure that we would want to think about. Um, and baby bonds being sort of the policy there as well. Shorten I have to the say, as policy wonks, this is a thing of absolute beauty that is happening right now. It is. I actually saw the um, the four week or the four day work week results sort of came in over the past week or so the the, the preliminary results um, for the couple of communities that have tested that out came in so yeah shorter work week um, partner with some of the biggest employers in the state lobby the national uh, congress to reconsider the early childhood piece of the infrastructure plan this is great thank you all. Financial education built into our curriculum for pre-K to 12. That's a great suggestion. Uh, the network of financial opportunity centers in United Way, housing authorities in Mass, the Cliff Effect Pilot Partners, DESE. This is really great, everyone. Thank you. And Alina, I'm adding yours to the map. So keep keep adding in chat. So while this is continuing to populate, are there any questions about what we've talked about so far or any sort of lingering thoughts about the early childhood agenda? I'll pop into the chat and see if there's anything there, but feel free to come live if there. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Hi, Marisa. Since I'm new, I still, and I saw the game board, but I was wondering after December 20, is there still space to get feedback either on the challenges or the solutions? Can we do that locally? And, and when is your time frame to get that feedback by? Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, it is. Um, what we're really doing the next two meetings as is uh, the focus time where we can start to develop the solutions. So over the next two weeks, I would say that's the best time to get feedback on the challenges that we've identified. And then the two weeks following the 20th would be the best time to get feedback on the solutions that we've identified. So we're gonna hope to have, um, or we're, we're going, it's January 24th, Amy, do I have that date right for the state of the date? January 24th, yes. January 24th, okay. That will be the, uh, the sort of event to release the early childhood agenda at the state house on January 24th. Okay, thank you. And Anna, do you want to do a quick intro of who you are? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna Nieto, and I just joined the Somerville Family Learning Collaborative in a new role of coordinator of prenatal to school entry partnership alignment and grant development. So I, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Amy. Welcome, Anna. <laughs> We will okay, continue. Great. So the group, I mean, the Financially Secure Families is going to have a head start tomorrow. So uh, if you are listening and can join tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, we will do this with all five of the different work groups. And we and Marissa, these will be available to other folks, right? So people can do yeah. this through base camp. So tomorrow at 10 is not your only opportunity, but we would love to have as many people as possible. Because as you can see, as other people are adding, it's helpful for your own uh, brainstorming as well. Marissa, any final comments for today? No, just thank you all so much for providing this initial feedback. I'm a little jealous of the financially secure families group. They're <laughs> going to be, <laughs> they're going to have a, a lot more 
sort of to discuss tomorrow, which will be exciting. So thank you all for providing this feedback. And like Amy said, there'll be a lot more opportunities beyond tomorrow. Oh, also that we have the 930 call at night on Thursday. So uh, from 8 to 830, just another opportunity very similar to this one to get into the group map and provide some initial feedback. So Titus is sharing the agenda tomorrow's will start in the homeroom and then we will go into work groups. Marissa, do you know the time kind of allocation? I think it's about half an hour in the homeroom and then the last hour is in the work groups. And the way that our culture has been, we go to homeroom together, we go to our work groups and then we adjourn from there so we don't come back. And again, we know that folks are busy, but it's been really helpful to have kind of this dedicated time to be together. So with that, Marissa, thank you so much for this update. Um, so the Zoom link for the work group, if you sign up for the Early Childhood Agenda, um, earlychildhoodagenda.org, you will um, get the link for the work group. If you don't get it by tomorrow morning, you can shoot an email to us, but you should get it. And then on Basecamp, there was a long update posted last week, Thursday or Friday. So that all that information is there as well. I'll post um, that one again today. The only thing I'll say is that it's not for the work group itself. So what we do is we ask everyone oh, to right. come into the homeroom and meet together. And That's then right. our facilitator will sort of post the separate links in the chat so that we can go from there to the different work groups. Thanks for that clarification. We have worked very hard on those logistics. <laughs> Thanks so much for everyone for joining us. Tomorrow we'll see the video uh, that the feds put out around mom voices. And then Wednesday and Donna Dinette, I saw your update, which is incredibly heartbreaking. Um, and thank you for sharing that. So we will have time for updates in the field. And then on Thursday, we will have um, Joan Wasser Gish will join us to talk about her work really around comprehensive services and have two folks that she's working with, one from Salem and one from Springfield. So, and that's the 9.30 call this week. Um, otherwise, we will see everyone tomorrow morning at 930 and then at 10 a.m. for the early childhood agenda. Take care and have a great day.